everybody. Happy Friday. Woohoo! We got through the week. <laughs> and I'm here with my lovely and amazingly talented friend, Dara Moskowitz Grumdahl. Thank you for tuning in if you're catching this live, everybody. And thank you to anybody who's joining later. Dara was kind enough to come and talk to me about a project that I've been working on for many years, <laughs> but I'm just launching into again this year called Refine Your Life or Change It Completely. And Dara was kind enough to offer to do this when, uh, during the course of one of our conversations just last night, I guess, I was moaning and groaning about how challenging it is to talk about this project, talk about life change, all the technical challenges I've run into, pivoting my own business online, the changes we both made in our lives. And ultimately, she's like, why don't we just get on the StreamYard thing and talk about it live, technical problems and all. So thank you for your bravery, Dara, and coming to join me and for your generosity and in, in making the offer to come talk about it all. Well, I am your biggest fan. I know I have a lot of uh, rivals for that, but uh, my main thing about you is that you have made my life so much better just knowing you, having access to your wisdom. You have refined my life year after year after year, and you have brought me so many real life big changes. And I just think, are there people that are not accessing this, that are not like, you know, they, they could have this opportunity um, and, and so that's why I'm here. I want to help you launch this and I want everybody to be as improved in their lives as I have been by you. Thank you so much. And thank you for bearing with me to both you and other folks who are noticing my weird Wi-Fi problems. This is like one of the, the things that I think has kept me in a I, I guess kept me playing smaller personally and professionally, living in the middle of nowhere, having rural internet, not having a technical wizard in my midst. And this is, you know, I think an example of the barriers to change, just one of many, that often the circumstances of our life don't provide all of the support systems that we might feel that we need to make change. And the tendency that we have and I know you've run into this too, when we are missing a resource or a support system, um, is that we just kind of stop. <laughs> At least I have made that mistake before. And a lot of times we need encouragement and support and accountability to move forward. Um, I, you have also been a really great source of support in my life, Dara, and in terms of you know encouraging me to write my book, encouraging me to make changes in my career, in my personal life, at times where I just felt really frozen. Um, and I, I don't want to talk about that a little bit today because I think that as we're going into a season uh, both the holiday season, which is ripe for self-reflection and consideration, and then the New Year season, which of course pushes us into resolutions and big plans that often end up sputtering on us, um, that can be a pretty overwhelming set of prospects. So today we're talking about real life big change or real big life change, depending. <laughs> and uh, I'd love to just sort of, I guess, open the conversation with you about, you know, inviting you too to talk about what life change means for you at this time in our, our lives. You know, we're both in our 50s now. And I think a lot of folks feel like maybe this is like it's too late to make big life changes at this point. And I personally completely disagree with that. But I know some of the exciting changes that you've been making just in this past year in terms of shifting gears and your focus professionally. And um, so I just have to talk about a little bit about what that feels like for you going into life change season again and again and again, particularly now. Well, there's so many things. It's like your obstacles to success in your life, I think, and not to be too hippie-ish about it, they're almost always internal. And the problems that that are really keeping you from making these leaps forward, like they take a lot of, of, of insight and attention and energy. I mean, when you're talking about having the techno problems being the thing that is the obstacle – you know, what I'm thinking about now is like how I was as a young woman, uh, as a girl, as of my whole life, acculturated to like, be perfect. You have to be perfect. You have to be perfect. And we see what happens when young men are acculturated to move fast and break things. I mean, like the, uh, one of the lessons of, of 
the last decade for me has been, you know, you and I just sit here and they're like, how can we be more perfect? How can I make this manuscript better? How can I do a thing? How can I be thinner? How can I sleep more? How can I be more attractive to men? How can I have a cleaner bathroom? Like all of these things. And there's, there's just these men out there who are just like, I'm going to take $44 billion and set fire to it. Like, I'm going to take $30 billion of people's life savings and I'm going to set fire to it. But it's not my fault. It's just like the, you know, understanding um, these barriers that are inside you. Like you have helped me so much. Like I had so many barriers inside me that I have just unaware of. You know, you talk about the healthy default reality. The first time you hear that phrase, you're just like, I don't know what those words mean. And then as you go forward and go forward and it's like women have to be perfect and you can't get into the public square until you're perfect. But men, go on in there, set fire to someone else's $30 billion. That's fine. (laughs) <laughs> well, I think that's, you're touching on one of the most important aspects um, for me too, of uh, approaching life change with an understanding of the internal barriers, belief systems, assumptions, attitudes, social programming, uh, indoctrination that lead us to oftentimes stop before we've started or to make our approach so much smaller and more timid than it deserves to be. Um, I, I personally believe that when we have a desire for change, it's really because the change is meant for us in some way. But there is that external set of you know ideals or perfectionistic standards that we feel we need to meet before we're quote unquote ready. And this is a syndrome that's sort of known as the perfect preparer syndrome that I have certainly been guilty of, tending to do all of this really hard work <laughs> and insist on these really high standards before you're willing to put a toe in the water and even see how you feel about this change. Um, it amazes me to hear you say that I've been super helpful to you in that regard because you've also been very helpful to me. And I think oftentimes I've found myself following in your footsteps, you know, with admiration of like, well, look, if Dara can do this, I can do it. And I remember that when you first started doing like live video broadcasts, I was like, oh my God, how does she do that? I could never do that. (laughs) <laughs> and now look at me doing it with bad internet and everything. It's amazing. But thank you for that. Um, that that, yeah. Think, so let's you know, talk a little bit about that. Sorry, that kind of Hopefully. thing that the, um, you know, having you on a team is such a profound gift and like such a difficult thing. You, I think that you and I have been talking about the kind of toxic internal shadow that comes from that idea of like, six weeks to a bikini body since for 20 years. Right. And so it's like, I think that people get this, especially around new years, get into this thing where you're like, Oh, I already tried to have a, you know, a perfect bikini body in six weeks. Like everybody's trying to sell me a perfect bikini body in six weeks. And I know it can't be done. And it's like, no, it can't be done. That's right. You will not find anyone except Pilar who's going to tell you like, yeah, that's a load of hooey. And you have to get rid of that, uh, you know, get rid of that whole paradigm. Like that's one of your obstacles. The first obstacle is way behind the obstacle. And so, you know, that's I really love this idea of people taking your course because having access to a brilliant mind like yours, it doesn't happen every day. It's very difficult. It doesn't doesn't come around. Oh, thank you. Um, The workshop series that Dara is referring to and that I was talking about is called Refine Your Life or Change It Completely. And if anybody's interested in checking it out, it's available in the program section over at healthydeviant.com or there's the URL I'm posting here. You can like tap it out if you want to or search on it. Um, But it's launching in January, January 14th, and it runs for six weeks. So one of the things that we do really differently in Refine Your Life is we assume this is not a one and done, one webinar type of solution, that you're really learning the skills and the major building blocks of life change, both your values, your vision, your goals, your action plans, how to understand and see your obstacles differently and overcome them in a really conscious way, and also to see the reality of your progress and success through a different light. 
there are lots of ways to go about making life change. But what you were saying, Dara, about first addressing the total hooey, I think <laughs> knowing what not to do is as important in some cases with life change as knowing what to do. Like, do not sign yourself up for a program that is promising you instant transformations in, you know, a number of hours or days and without like, acknowledging don't have it that in your head. Don't let that into your precious yeah. brain and, and, you know, and then sabotage <laughs> you. I think people do that. And I don't even think I knew I was doing it until, until I met you. Hmm. Thank you. I didn't know I was doing it either for most of my life. And I will say that, all of the work I've done, both in Experience Life magazine and in my book. Where's my book? I have a book somewhere around here. Look, I wrote a book <laughs> in my book, The Healthy Deviant, which you helped me launch, you know, back in 2020, Dara. Remember 2020? Oh, my God. But also um, in this workshop, the Refine Your Life workshop, which I'm doing, this is right the workbook here. for it. You got my ball. That makes me feel so good. But I used to, when I didn't understand, I, I spent most of my life doing it that way, thinking about instant fixes, thinking about just give me the program, just tell me what to do, tell me the exercise, tell me the diet, tell me the perfect meditation strategy, give me the program. And then I would just wonder th why the heck this isn't working. I'm trying really hard. It's setting me back, not forward. So a lot of the work I've done journalistically and as a writer, author, thinker, speaker, has been to try to disabuse people of those notions that tended to set me back and instead instill both the tools and the methodologies and the philosophies that really are proven to work. And by proven, I mean they're proven in positive psychology research and you know lab testings, and even some clinical trials about how people respond, how behavior change works or doesn't work. All of that is built in there. But ultimately, I feel like some of the most powerful insights I've had about life change have come from doing it <laughs> <laughs> maddeningly wrong, you know, like being convinced and programmed by the culture of instant fixes that if I just got the right program at the right time, that, that would be the solution. And I think what you and or I are if you were saying like is that internally like good enough, you like Cinderella, like you just like walked out of the vegetable patch and the stars swirled around you because you were good and you good and tried and you have pure heart. Like I think, uh, you know, your life work has been doing a lot of these very brave experiments. You know, there it's a, uh, it's a trap, I think, for women in this country to have this idea that like there's some level of perfection that you can achieve and then people will be happy with you. Um, and and you have been uh, uh, and then you would be happy with yourself. And like you have been showing that that is not the truth for your whole life. And that's a brave thing to do. You know, that mm -hmm. unhealthy default reality. Like, mm -hmm. I love that phrase. That is uh, something that I think in 20 years, everyone will be talking about. And uh, for a lot of people, <laughs> it's scary. It's scary to think about the unhealthy default reality because then you have to be like, oh, some people in my family have the unhealthy default reality and they believe it. And some people in my community who are important to me yeah. and they're going to say I'm bad if I say that I'm not on this show anymore or whatever. Like, I'm not going to do this anymore. <laughs> it, takes a lot of, it takes a lot of heart and spirit. And that's why, um, you know, when you talk about what you're doing when you're offline, the phrase that Pilar uses is that she's trying to bring her gifts uh, and sh your gifts are so profound. Um, and then I just think like mm. people need to get access to them and that people are just, you know, spending all their time putting their money in crypto or going to a fake, you know, <laughs> bar class or like doing all of these things. They're doing a cleanse. They're doing all of this goofy stuff when in fact, you know, the personal is the only thing that's going to change stuff. And that's what you do. You do this one on one on one work with people to change the only thing that you experience, the personal, like the thing inside, the thing inside that yeah. tells you, like, I don't have to do healthy default reality. Yes. It's so interesting. So the unhealthy default reality for anybody that hasn't read my book or hasn't heard me use that phrase is my term for the society we're living in, right? Where all of the default automatic choices tend to be unhealthy, both physically and mentally and emotionally and spiritually and socially. And the 
choices that we all think we should make or want to make, like eating healthy and getting enough sleep and getting enough exercise, those things are really challenging to do. They are not the automatic default. They're things that require huge amounts of energy and attention and determination and resilience, um, which are hard to come by in a society where most people are overwhelmed and depleted a lot of the time. And that's part of the really nasty catch-22 is that the society we live in does deplete us. It does overwhelm us. It does leave us feeling incompetent and incapable. And then at the same time, it throws at these, uh, it throws at us these standards and ideals that we're all aspiring to, you know, think about like that Instagram feed that's supposed to be aspirational, but that's just totally depressing. I think that when we reframe life change in a context that actually includes our society, we, ha we have to do that. We have to stop thinking about me changing myself as this like little contained thing that we can completely control. We are creating life change in the context or the container of a society that is absolutely crazy. And what we're doing is facing off against this unhealthy default reality at a, at a level that requires attention and energy and resources that most of us don't have. So right. one and of the big what, things I really things, recommend people. I'm going to interrupt because like, that's one of the ahead. things that I can't, that you can't yeah. uh, underestimate is the people that have, you know, the healthy, uh, yeah, uh, the <laughs> that have the healthy deviant university. Let's see if I could do this. Um, you know that have access to this community. I mean, it's like you really can't yeah. go against the entire society telling you, like, oh, you if you only had willpower, you'd have a bikini body in six weeks. Like, you can't go against that world alone because you'll feel crazy. You'll you know come to a day that you're depleted, and then you'll fall apart. And what you're doing with healthy deviant university with your book, with all these things is like providing the community, providing the context, providing a team that's going to be in your corner and say like, oh yeah, not, yes, this is crazy. Yes, you can do it. Yes, it is hard. And where are you going to get that support system? Like you're not going to get that support system uh, down at the bar because people are going to be like, no, just have a bourbon. It'll all go away. <laughs> and you're not going to get it on Twitter because <laughs> people are just going to be like, come with me. And we're going to yell about Nazis and that'll make you feel better. It won't in the middle of the night, you'll feel worse. And so, you know, yeah. when I hear you talking about like, oh, the, the internet is not working out here. You know what that is? You made a choice to live in the country, to, you know, make your mental health and your family and your body the center of your life. And then society was like, well, you can have good priorities, but then you can't have internet. <laughs> you know? so, totally. That's exactly it, you know? And it's interesting to me, well, two things I want to say about what you just said. One, yeah, supportive community and getting reality that is like supporting reality you actually want to live in instead of the one that is out there, the unhealthy default reality, that is huge. And in my Healthy Deviant You group, we do it all year long. We go, you know, through four phases, starts, the, you know, start where you are, then reclaim your mojo, then raise your game, then be the change. And we have like, oh my gosh, it's so much fun because we have game boards that people are going through and checking stuff off together. This is just like a little example, like for phase two. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever even seen this. This is a really fun project. But what happens is that people are going through that journey together, you know, literally set up as a little path that they go through. They start comparing notes and sharing what's actually happening in their real life experience. And there's so much warmth and enthusiasm and encouragement that happens as people are going, oh, I thought it was just me. It's you too. Oh, yeah, you did it. Well, then maybe I can do it. And they're challenging their own and each other's, you know, assumptions in ways that I feel like is so invigorating. Like that's a human resource that's available to us. We often don't embrace because we're too busy reading listicles, you know, in magazines and on Instagram that tell us what to do, as opposed to being lit on fire by realizing these changes can be done without enormous amounts of exertion if you have the right support system. So that's one thing. The second thing you wanted I, that you said about um, making these decisions that the life choice for me, for example, to realize that I function better personally as a human being out here in the middle of nowhere, even if it means no internet, I will choose that even though it's crap for my business, it's hard for my followers, it's tricky for me to get attention on the projects I'm working on. But if I have all the right internet and I'm a shredded 
depleted, miserable human being, it doesn't work for me. So I have to reprioritize according to that. It's not perfect. Hopefully it'll get better with fiber optic next year. But in the meantime, I made a decision, and this is what I encourage people to do when they're making big life changes, put the big priorities in place first. And for you, your mental health, your physical health, your emotional well-being, for all of us, these things are of bedrock importance. But instead, we tap, what happens is we get talked into thinking that, you know, thin thighs in 30 days is important or perfect skin is important, you know, or um, achieving the lifestyles of the rich and famous is important. And we want to impress other people. And so we abandon our baseline efforts, the most essential responsibilities we have to ourselves, in seeking external priorities that are often put upon us. Um, and the illusion, the idea that if only I had these other things in place, then my life would be good and I'd be happy. So that's a major reframing that's, I think, a through line in most of my work is like, let's get back to the most basic pieces first. Because Oh, and there's no money in it, right? I mean, that's <laughs> like the part of the thing that's so vexing totally. is that, you know, you can just sit here all day and be like, you know what you need? You need sleep. You need a foundation of sleep. You need a foundation of exercise. And while you're saying this very unsexy basic thing, there's going to be 30 shysters running past you being like, no, you need to buy my brain oil. Like that's going to be the thing. That you <laughs> <laughs> buy my brain oil. That's yeah, going to exactly. be my new bumper sticker. Just yeah, buy my brain oil. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, and then it's like, you know, who has great Wi-Fi? You know, who's entering the wellness space? Anderson Cooper. Give me a break of heir to the Vanderbilt fortune. Like, what does he know about having a difficult life and making things um, work? Like, if you haven't ever worried about your light bill, don't talk to me about wellness. If you ever haven't struggled uh, against a whole family who needs you to get a night's sleep, don't talk to me about your, uh, you know, your perfect skin and your awesome gym body. Like, that guy, oh, just absolutely drives me crazy. <laughs> And so when I think about, you know, when I think about like, so you've got, you know, people, this opportunity to change people and you're just going like one by one and trying to move like one person into the world, like the, the, the challenges of selling something real in a world of snake oil. Like it's mm -hmm. so crazy. It's so difficult. And people probably hear this and they're like, well, I don't know. I don't, what's the metric? How am I going to uh, fix it? And I'll tell you like some of these things, you're not going to have that exact metric. It took me six months of sleep before I started seeing like amazing benefits. And it's like yeah. month one, all I got was that people were like, why are you sleeping so much? I need your labor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can't you produce more faster if you don't yeah. sleep? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Oh, well, God, you know, <laughs> so I, I want to speak a little bit to that, too, that a lot of times the voices that rise to the top um, in our society, the messages that get through media and that media puts the frame around, as my friend Aaron Rasmussen would say, that goes around the already rich and famous. It goes around the powerful. It goes around the kind of ambitious. And so there's a self-selecting group of voices that keep getting amplified and keep telling their version of the truth, which often is a truth that really just serves the machine that sells more stuff. Yes. So if all you're listening to are these people who have platforms with millions of followers and you start noticing, boy, they're there's a lot of stuff being sold. There's a lot of their friends who also have enormous platforms who are coming on and they start to amplify each other and echo each other. And at some point, you know, I often find myself listening briefly to those streams of content. And I'm like, why are so many people listening to this? It's not helpful. It's not good. It's not really realistic or relevant to most people's lives. And yet, somehow we get sucked into everyone else is listening to this. That person has 12 million followers. They must have something worthwhile to say. And if they do and it works for you, then great. If, if listening to that stuff is helping you and you can feel it's making a positive change, by all means, be my guest to do that. At the same time, I can't help but feel that too often the voices, for me at least, that have been the most powerful ones, the, the ideas that have taken hold and been usable for me are quieter 
voices. They're voices that are more experimental. They're well, voices that are willing to tell it like it is. That community thing I was talking about a minute ago. It's like you yeah. will, you know, I was living, I used to work at CNN, if you could imagine such a thing. And I used to uh, know Anderson Cooper, though I've seen his lovely loft and things like that. And it's like the, um, the it's like a, a pyramid of people who are all trying to suck up to him and get into yeah. his parties. And all of those people oh are going to put him as the number one person in your world. And that is going to happen because there's just an invisible army of support to go to parties with him because he's super fun and lovely and stuff. And he's really rich and you could drink really great wine and have really great canapes <laughs> on his really great loft if you will only, you know, get into that. And Pilar um, was in that world and she said, no, I don't want that. I will not, uh, you know, have my eyelashes fall out for you, Ariana Huffington. Like it is not my... <laughs> <laughs> it is not my calling. And that's what I feel like you get through hanging out with Pilar, getting access to her information, um, being part of her programs is that you get this other community that is against this mighty Borg of money sucking and status sucking that wants you on that team. And there is no winning on that team unless you are born into it or marry it. You know, the, mm. you don't get they don't have gifts for you. Pilar has gifts for you. They're, they're, um, and they're remarkable and they have benefited me. I cannot tell you how much. That just blows my mind to hear you say that. It really does. I feel like you have, a, I've always, um, I feel like you too have always really done your level best to tell the truth about what you know, to what you know, to work, what you know, to be important. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about for folks that are right now in this moment, thinking about change, like either at the level of just like the next couple months, like through the holiday season, let's say, and New Year's, giving yourself permission to do things differently, I think is the very first step. Just because it's always been done this way by you and by your family and your friends doesn't mean it has to be the way it goes this year. And I think this is a great time in terms of like the span of history of our lifetimes there's a million excuses that you can throw out if you need to feel like you need an excuse of why you're doing it differently this year, because everything has freaking changed. So give yourself the grace, first of all, of allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to do it differently. Ne maybe negotiating how you're doing the holidays differently is a start. I personally have found that quieting my holidays down, doing fewer things around gifts and buying things, instead creating experiences has been really valuable. Just quiet nights quiet days, you know, like talking to people I want to talk to and not trying to talk to everybody or write cards to everybody or respond to messages from everybody. Those things have been rather dramatic for me. And we've, I've written a bunch of things. I have a piece um, called the healthy deviant, a guide to the survival guide, to, like the healthy deviant holiday survival guide or something like that. I'll be posting that shortly again, because it's evergreen. But for me, the really healthy deviant, the most important healthy deviant step was like, what do I actually want? What do I actually have an appetite for right now? And when it comes back around then to January and the whole resolutions thing and new year, new you, new everything, same thing. Like I think just giving yourself permission to do nothing for a little while could be really dramatic. Like what if you went into the new year without any of that stuff? And well, just and started noticing kind of foundation. What I think of as some of your foundational, you know, just really important insights. One of the things that we talk about all the time is if you get out ahead of your tribe, you know, whatever your tribe is, you get out ahead of them and you will feel alone. You will feel like you're in bad territory. You will feel like it's not safe there. And, you know, one of the tribes that we have is the United States. And one of the tribes we have is, you know, the massive materialist pressure, materialist culture. Um, at one of the incredibly important steps I've taken in my own mental health journey, which has been supported by Pilar every step of the way, is getting out and walking every day. It has changed my life. It is the smallest thing. The amount of pressure that I faced to not do that when I first started, like you wouldn't believe everyone is just like, sit at your computer and make phone calls or, you know, help me with this thing or clean your floor another time. And one of the things that I see now that I am out walking every day 
is people having these ridiculous, perfect people photo shoots for their Christmas cards, like all through the fall is people putting on these like, you know, huge costumes and, you know, getting like putting their toddlers in the leaves and, you know, doing cartwheels around them and everybody's crying. And the whole thing is just like, what are you, what are we doing? What are we doing to ourselves in this moment? And what are we doing to each other through the mail? Like, what is all of this? Mm-hmm. And these are things that uh, you, if you want to have insights like this and be uncomfortable and then have a better life later, like Pilar is the way to do it. <laughs> the way to do it is not going to be through the, you know, the airport kiosk because everybody's profiting from this swindle. Everyone, as mm-hmm. you, you know, there's just Pilar out here going like, there's another way. And the whole country is like, no, you should give us money for drugs and then, um, you know, <laughs> buy more six week programs and just uh, try to intimidate other people through your Instagram feed. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is great. I like this is like turning into a, a wonderful rant that I am like, oh my God, we need to rant more about this. And I know we have to like wrap this up because we could talk about this all day. Um, so a couple of things I just want to like put a pin in both as like topics I want to talk more about, but that I really want to make sure people hear. Um, it, first of all, that making change requires energy and focus and determination. And if you're feeling depleted and overwhelmed and exhausted and judged by our society and not good enough, that level of determination and enthusiasm is hard to come by and it's really hard to maintain. So the very first thing that I really recommend to people, it's like, lower the level of pressure and stress on yourself and actually listen rather than from what the outside is telling you you should do or need to do to be okay or better or good enough. Listen to the desire that's coming from within you to rest, recover, be kind and compassionate to yourself and listen to the call of like, really for some things to change for the better, what would you be energized to do now? And I love Dara that you mentioned that that taking those daily walks from the outside, it doesn't like you're not going to impress anybody by like my newest resolution is to take a walk. Like, <laughs> but that could be the most even one walk could transform your self perception and your feeling of what's possible for you. And that doesn't cost you money. It doesn't have to be a big gigantic commitment. So that's number one. Like, be lower the bar of urgency and pressure on yourself and listen to the voice that's coming from inside you. That's like, hey, sweetheart. Maybe just take it easy on yourself a little bit. <laughs> well, and then also get a get a support system of people that will, you know, say that that is an okay thing to do and a good thing yes. to do, and that's yes. what you are offering. You know, um, it really like I can't tell you as a mom how much pressure there is to not sleep and to not take a walk. Like it's there yeah. all the time, and who is going to be on your side saying? Um, this is important. A uh, pilar is pilar community <laughs> is like you know, and it's it's hugely important. People will say, you know, oh, that's a little thing. Like, no, that's the biggest thing there is. I really believe this. I completely agree. Well, so okay, for folks that are interested in checking out my refine your life or change it completely thing, this is launching in January. But people who sign up for it right now immediately get into the community, immediately get a quick start guide and a bunch of really cool resources. Um, folks who want to find out about that can check it out at my healthydeviant.com site. Uh, refine your life is the name of the program. If you search on that, you're also going to find it, but here's the URL. If you want to go straight there, you can do that. Um, again, it's a six week workshop series. So it's just like something we start in January and then we meet weekly live and do interactive workshop sessions for six weeks. It's actually going to be seven weeks this year because we had to change a couple dates, but there's also a bunch of really cool bonuses like office hour sessions where we get to spend more time together in community, working live on your real life challenges, real life questions. It's very intimate. This is not one of those massive webinars that reaches like 35,000 people simultaneously and then sells you more stuff at the end. I mean, I will give my best shot at convincing you to do more with me, but it isn't about that. It's really um, a proven process that you get to customize as you go through it. So anybody's interested in doing that, yay. If that's not also, for you. You can, you can give this as a holiday gift. You can give it to your sister and give it to yourself. Ooh, and then you can do this thing yeah. together and you can have like a real supportive community. You can start making these, bi- these, I am telling you, there is nothing more important than community, sleep, uh, walking and access to Pilar. These are the things. <laughs> 
It's like daily food groups. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. It has changed my life. That's why I, I want to do this. I, I believe in nothing more than you. Oh, that's so great. Oh, I wanted to share just a couple little cute comments that came in. Somebody on Facebook said, love the Refine Your Life workshop. It's definitely life-changing. Uh, thank you, whoever that was. And also to the person who wrote a little earlier that they were identifying with our conversation about, you know, feeling not enough, um, not good enough to do what we want to do wanting to start my own business, but not feeling enough. Boy, can I relate to that, especially with the technology piece. Thank you for sharing that too. And for the rest of you who are out there. I say, like, know, also, that's the Borg going at you for Star Trek people. Like there's a, a lot of pressure out there, which is just like, you, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You know, you are good enough. Uh, and you need some people to tell you that you're good enough. And I have Pilar. Now I'm just like, what am I doing here? I'm share. I'm going to, she's going to have no time for me, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, and I am fortunate to have you as a great booster and cheerleader and a person who often takes my hand and, you know, guides me across turbulent waters when I could just as easily stay on the other side. And I think we just all need to be doing more of that for each other. So Thank you for taking the time to talk with me and drawing me out of my little rural shell back onto the internet. Anytime. You know? And you know what? This went great. So what if the internet wasn't like 100% perfect? It was close. It was pretty good. <laughs> and so, you know, just believing in yourself and having a team. Look at this. We're proving it. Like literally at 11 o'clock this morning, you were like, we can't do it. There's a technology problem. And I said, we're going to just do it, right? Because I believe in you and I believe in getting this done and I believe in how big your gifts are and how transformative they are and how important they are. And I love you. Oh, thank you. I love you too, Dara. And I look forward to spending 2023 getting even better with you all the time. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining in. Happy holidays. And I'll see you soon, I hope.